Welcome to PsychGrad Reacts, my YouTube channel where I look at different types of media through a psychological lens for both fun and educational purposes. Today I'll be focusing on a UK holiday staple, Love Actually. Love Actually is a film that contains several different interconnected storylines that focus on love. Or do they? Each storyline might be a bit more complicated than that. Spoilers ahead. It's no coincidence that we start off the Mark, Julie and Peter storyline with Mark and Peter at the altar, but more on that later. Whilst Peter is waiting for Juliet, he asks Mark to ensure him that there will be no surprises referring to the mishap at his bachelor party. Mark reassures him and soon after, Juliet appears walking down the aisle. Officially married, the two kiss and begin their new life as husband and wife. As they do this, they are serenaded with a rendition of All You Need Is Love by the Beatles. It's a sweet surprise from Mark, and although he acts bashful, it is obvious that he was the one that planned it, which the couple are clearly grateful for. We pick up at the wedding reception where Peter and Juliet are interacting with their families, whilst Mark is alone recording the festivities. Sarah asks, Do you love him? What? No, I, I just thought I'd ask the blunt question in case it was the right one and you needed someone to talk to about it and no one had ever asked you so you've never been able to talk about it even though you might have wanted to. This conversation has led many to believe that Mark is actually in love with Peter and may not know how to deal with these feelings, so he projects them onto Juliet. Examples of this include the mishap at Peter's bachelor party. No surprises? No surprises. I like the stag night. I like the stag night. Admit the Brazilian prostitutes were a mistake. I do. And it would have been much better if they'd not turned out to be men. That is true. The way Mark acts towards Juliet, which everyone seems to be aware of, including Peter. But for now, I've got Juliet on the other line. He wants to ask you a favour. OK, fine. Be nice. I'm, I'm always nice. You know what I mean, Marky. Be friendly. I'm always... Mark? Hi. So, what can I do for you? I just tried the wedding video and come out all blue and wibbly. I'm sorry. And the way he reacts to the question of whether or not he loves Peter. No, 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 is, is the answer no. A absolutely not. That's a no then? Yes. After four no's and an absolutely not, there's a brief pause before Mark changes the subject. With this DJ, what do you reckon? It is no accident that Sarah's the one to pick up on something, but more on that in her video. And while I do believe there is merit to this theory, if you agree, disagree, or have your own theory, comment below. I'm only going to commentate on the storylines that are presented. In this scene, Juliet goes to Mark's flat with a sweet treat in hopes that he has a better version of her and Peter's wedding video. Instantly, Mark is avoidant and states that he doesn't know where the video is, but he'll look for it. Juliet confronts Mark about their tepid relationship. Can I say something? I know you're Peter's best friend. I know you've never particularly warmed to me. No, don't, don't argue. We've never got friendly. I just wanted to say I hope that can change. I'm nice. It would be great if we could be friends. And Mark's response is... Absolutely. Meeting our partner's family and friends for the first time is nerve-wracking. We do all we can to impress them, get them to like us with varying levels of success. Because whether we like it or not, these people can have influence on our relationships. I think Juliet's approach was good. She was direct and honest and even proposed a fresh start to their relationship, only to receive a flippant response. Juliet finally finds what she's looking for, but might regret that decision. This next scene is just painful. I'm not talking about the way it's shot or the actor's performance, who are actually selling how awkward this would be. I'm talking about how uncomfortable this situation is. What would you do? How would you feel? The scene also conveys mixed messages as the music in the background is sweet. A little sad, but romantic. Are we meant to be rooting for Mark? Slowly, Juliet starts to realize. You've stayed rather close, haven't you? <laughs> They're all of me. Confused, she says to Mark. You never talk to me. You don't like me. I hope it's useful. Don't. Show it around too much. Needs a bit of editing. And just like before, Mark changes the subject. His justification for being dismissive, even cold to her, is... It's a self-preservation thing, you see. I know Mark and his feelings towards Juliet and possibly Peter are the focus of this storyline, but I would have loved to have seen at least five to ten seconds of footage that focus on Juliet after everything has come to light. What is she feeling? 
Is she relieved now that she has some clarity? Is she upset that she couldn't see it? What if Peter finds out? What will be the ramifications of that situation? Instead, we get almost a full minute of Mark freaking out. The next and last time this storyline is visited is the infamous cardboard scene. For almost 20 years, this scene has been parodied on TV and in film. It has also been allotted as one of the most romantic gestures. However, this is not romantic. In fact, it's creepy, intense and unfair. If we were to run through the events of this romantic gesture, he first makes her lie to her husband. It's carol singers! Give him a quid and tell him to bugger off! Shows her a picture of a dead body and the scene ends with them sharing a kiss and Mark walks away, validated in his actions. The term creepy might seem harsh, but the definition of the word is to cause unpleasant feelings of fear or unease. I also use the words intense and unfair because that's what his actions were, giving little to no thought to Peter and Juliet. This storyline proposes the question, when is it the right time to tell someone you like them? I think we can all agree that it should have been before the wedding, or at least before the person enters into a serious relationship. If I have the timeline correct, Mark would have met Juliet through Peter, so the latter option would have been impossible. In situations like this, the question should be reworded, instead of when do you tell someone you like them, it should be should you tell someone you like them. If I were to play devil's advocate, it could be argued that no one was meant to find out Mark's feelings towards Juliet, and what he did with the cardboard signs was a response to her finding out. However, I don't necessarily think that's true. Earlier in the film, it is established that Mark and Peter were meant to meet later in the week at Mark's flat, where the video was clearly labelled. There's one here that says... Peter and Juliet's wedding, do you think we might be on the right track? What if Peter were the one to find it? Let's look at another hypothetical situation. What if Peter were the one to answer the door instead of Juliet? What if Peter came down mid-declaration of love? How would this have played out? Once the cat was out of the bag, Mark didn't really seem to consider Juliet or Peter's feelings. Whilst keeping your feelings bottled can lead to physical and mental ailments, I think Mark should have thought out his actions better, decipher what he was truly feeling, consider the people involved, and have a rational conversation with himself and possibly Juliet, instead of doubling down on his declaration of like. I use the word like here because I don't think what Mark feels towards Juliet is love. Infatuation maybe? Misdirected infatuation, but not love. To be honest, it would have made more sense if the storyline focused on Peter and Mark because there's an established history and relationship. There is no established anything between Mark and Juliet. That's why she's so surprised when he reveals that he has feelings for her. You always talk to Peter. You don't like me. When it comes to love, there should be a reason behind it. Whether it's unrequited or mutual, there needs to be a root cause as to why you are in love with someone. During this entire storyline, there's no real reason given. Even during his declaration of love, all he does is tell her how he feels, but not why he feels that way. The last bit of dialogue spoken in this storyline is... Enough now. Why now? Why not before they got married? It's because he got what he wanted. He's unloaded his feelings to his best friend's wife and now they have cheated on Peter. I worry about the future of Mark's dating life as he seems to develop strong feelings without much substance. He's also shown to be cold and distance when he does feel something which he rationalises as a form of self-preservation. Mark seems to struggle to form healthy romantic relationship with others. His inability to engage in intimacy due to his continuous avoidance when confronted on the subject results in unpredictable and inconsistent behaviour towards those he professes to love. Mark shows signs of someone who has insecure attachment. There's a link in the description below that better describes different types of attachment styles and how each style affects adult relationships. I feel that a large portion of romantic films, especially at this time, puts forward the notion that if you love someone enough, it excuses your behaviour, but in reality it doesn't. I'm happy to see that as time has gone on, these type of storylines are being viewed in a less romantic and aspirational light, and for more of what it is. Thank you for watching my video from Love Actually. More featured storylines will be up soon. I have been Psychgrad Reacts. Please follow me on Instagram at Psychgrad Reacts. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Be kind to one another in the comments, and I'll see you on the next video.